Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Um, today is video number six for my everyday story of October. Today's story is about a ghost that me and my best friend uh, lived with. So first, there's some important details that have to be stated um, before I go into the details of this ghost. So, I was living with my ex-boyfriend and we were having some complications and stuff and we ended up breaking up. And in the heartbreak and all the trouble, Oreo and I um, moved out of his house and in with my best friend who's in Nebraska. And we were in a house that was kind of old and we didn't really stay there long. Um, and in fact, a couple weeks after I had moved in to that house with them, we ended up moving to a brand new house. And during all of these things, and also I, I messaged her and I got... Um, all of these little details figured out. So I'm just going to read part of what she sent to me. Um, and this is kind of like her helping me tell the story so that I don't miss any details. Um, because they already had this place, uh, before I moved. And, um, so... Sorry, I thought I heard something, so I had to pause it and check. Um, okay, so basically, so they already had the place before I even moved in with them. And so she started her message out to me by saying, so there are some details that are important to the story beforehand, which is what we've already talked about a little bit. So the old house, which is the house that I moved into right after the breakup, and the new house had the same landlord. So the house that I moved to after the breakup and then the house that we all from there moved to, like the newer house, um, both of them had the same exact landlord. When we moved into the new house, the landlord told us that he had inherited the old house from a family uh, friend who had passed away inside the house. So, and I remember this too, because it was like the very beginning, he had just told us that and we had just moved out of that house. So, you know, we were all pretty shook um, that he didn't tell anybody that before. And they didn't know that, so I obviously didn't know that. And so then we all kind of just found out after we moved. Um, but, you know, I mean, I guess we kind of we kind of just brush it off because everybody was fine when we were living there. And we didn't really, like, experience any, like, huge things. I mean, the house was creepy sometimes, but... It wasn't like to the point where, oh my god, there's like paranormal activity stuff and we didn't find, you know, anything that would warrant, oh, maybe someone passed away here. Um, and we had moved already, so it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like we were still living there and then finding that out. He waited until we moved out at least to tell us this. So we were like, okay, well at least we're not there anymore. So we just kind of like brushed it off as it's whatever. And just basically went about our day, went about our lives or whatever. And, you know, we had a little bit of adjusting that we had to do in the new house. You know, um, nobody wanted to have the basement bedroom. We all wanted to have, like, certain bedrooms around each other. So, I mean, it was me, my best friend, and my best friend's sister-in-law. And the three of us were all really good friends, not including my other, um, hopeful best friend, friend, I don't know what to call her right now, but, 
<sighs> Aside from that drama. Um, you know, like we wanted our rooms to be all around each other, but we were not just living with us. There was two other people who had to be in the mix and you know so we had like this little adjustment period where we were just trying to like figure out how to be comfortable in this new found place that we were in and um I guess it was like maybe maybe a few weeks or something after we had moved into the new house every person in the house started to experience something like odd like individually we each started to experience um with like some sort of spirit my best friend was sleeping or sitting on her bed or whatever and all of a sudden it felt to her like someone was sitting on the foot of the bed and she didn't know who it was and when she looked there was no one there but she could feel like the bed was indented and it, it felt like someone was sitting there and it felt like someone should be sitting there but there was absolutely nobody there so that kind of freaked her out a little bit but she didn't say anything to anybody about it and then our other friend that we were living with, she always, like, kept her door closed. And she didn't want the cats that we had to go into the room because she had um, an air mattress. I almost said a water balloon. She had a water balloon for a bed. <laughs> she had an air mattress. And so she didn't want the cats to get in there and pop her bed because then she'd have to go and continuously buy a new one. So she always wanted the door to be shut. That and she didn't want like the kids running in there and messing with stuff and she didn't want other people that we she didn't trust or whatever to be in there. So for her it was just easier if she shut the door. And you know, because that kept happening and the cats kept getting in there because the door wouldn't stay shut. Uh, she just figured that, oh, well, it's a, a door malfunction, so I'm going to install a doorknob that has a lock on it. So every time she left the room, she would just lock the door. I'm going to pause that little section of the story, um, because there's a whole lot more to that little area. Um, so I'm going to then go and talk about what I had experienced. Um... So, as I was saying before, I was grieving a little bit from a relationship. And I was taking it pretty hard or whatever. And, you know, at nighttime, I was in the basement. So, you know, I was just laying in bed a lot crying. And out of nowhere, I felt my hair move. Like, it felt, my hair was longer at this point like it was it was down to past my butt or whatever and it felt like someone had picked up my hair and then just moved it but I'm the only one down there like I slept by myself I had Oreo but Oreo can't pick up my hair and physically move it um unless he's chewing on my hair and I think I would know if my dog was chewing on my hair and this was not him chewing on my hair um so she moved it and I didn't really, like, say anything, but then there was another time where I was, you know, crying and in my feels or whatever, and it literally felt like someone had touched my hand. Like, someone had taken my hand into theirs and was holding it. And then moments after that, it felt like I was being hugged. Like, I had this warm sensation just, like, fill me. And you know how, like, when you're being hugged, you have that pressure because there's another person there, you know? You're being hugged. You're being, you know, tight, held tightly. That's what I felt. And I was laying down, and I was by myself, and I was like, whoa. 
like what <laughs> so I'm gonna go back and read a little bit of this so do 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 so she so the the ghost did comfort me um, when I was sad and she sat at the foot of my friend's bed um and then now we're gonna go back to to our other friend so she was before she installed the lock on her door she was convinced that someone kept letting the cats in so that was a big thing that you know started arguments and just like really heated conversations or and if it didn't get to that which hardly ever did it was always a matter of well who let who let the cats in and it was a constant thing that was being brought up and the more it got brought up the more irritated people got because it's like we're not letting the cats in why can't you just believe us and then it was a matter of, well, can the cats push the door open and get in on their own? But then she would be like, okay, say that did happen, how would they close the door? So in order for them to get into the room, even if they pushed it, someone would have to have to close the door in order for that, you know, to keep them in there. Because we had noticed a couple times that she would go in there and the cats would come running out or whatever. So she was convinced that someone kept letting them in there. And the only time that she was okay with having them in there with her was if she was literally in the room with them to make sure that they weren't doing with anything that, you know, we're not supposed to. And then we kind of all started talking about it, like... We we kind of started sharing, like, these little experiences because, you know, like, oh, hey, by the way, do you know anything about that? Or, oh, hey, this happened, and I just wanted to let you know because, oh, my God. And then the other one would be like, oh, I had something similar happen. Um, I know that my best friend's boyfriend, he had seen some orbs. And I think at one point the light went out on him I'm, I'm not entirely sure like what experiences he had and I don't remember if his mom and her boyfriend at the time had any experiences I think they did but I cannot remember that um I mainly just asked about the three of us um but I think a couple times the lights had, you know, gone out and they were flickering or whatever. And, you know, so it just kind of started this huge conversation between everybody. And we thought, oh, well, maybe it's a ghost. Like, if all of this is happening, maybe it's a ghost. And there was a part in one of the nights that we... Like, we really realize that, oh, maybe this really is, like, a spirit or an entity or, like, some sort of ghost. And I hope I'm getting this part correctly when I'm saying this. Um, there was a time where she could have swore that there was a cat in her room. But the cats had been locked in my best friend's room with her all night because she wanted them in there. Because I, I believe the landlord was coming over the next day. And she didn't want them to be out and in the way. So I think she slept with them in her room that night. And um, so, but she, you know, like she swore that one of the cats was in the room. And she swore that she got up to let one of the cats out. But both cats were accounted for in the bedroom. And so then we were like, oh my gosh, we're both having this experience at the same time. And actually, while that was happening, that same night is when the hand, my hand was grabbed and when I was hugged and all of that. So all of that happened to all three of us the same night. Like simultaneously, she had someone sitting on her bed while there was a cat in the other room and I was being hugged and comforted so we literally all had that
And so we we definitely were convinced that it was a ghost. Um, something else that also convinced us that it was definitely a ghost is the fact that after, um, you know, after we thought that maybe it would be a ghost, we were talking about how the landlord said someone had died in the old house, and so maybe someone died in the new house too. Um, but then, like, stuff stopped happening for a while, so we just all kind of dropped it. But then there was another incident with the door. And so after after she installed the lock on her door, um, you know, like I said before, she always made sure to lock the door when she would leave the room. And then we were hearing noises from inside her room. And we were like, well, where's the cat's? And they can't be in there because the door is locked. The door is shut. And, you know, so how, how would anybody be in there? And she was like, well, I think something's in my room. And so we were all getting scared and everything. Well, then the light, all, I think there was also a time where we saw that the light, you know, had went on when it was off. But nobody touched the light. And then vice versa where the light was uh, off but then it turned on and nobody was touching the light or in the room when that happened and then so she opened the door and the cats came out and so we were like the door was locked she's the only one that has the key and she didn't let them in so how did the cats get into the bedroom no. um there was also another time where we physically watched as the door opened like the three of us were sitting on the couch watching tv and we heard her door creak and so we all looked at it and it was open and we were all sitting on the couch. So none of us opened it. We were the only ones home at that point. And so for the fact that it was open was like, how did that just open on its own? And then it closed also on its own. So we were just like, um, ghosty. Um... And then a couple days later, we got some mail um, that was addressed to a lady named Patricia. And so we did some research because we were all really curious at this point. Like we were having a bunch of activity happening to all of us and simultaneously and, and everything. So we looked her, uh, her up and we found Patricia's obituary. And I don't remember if we ever came to the conclusion on if she had passed away in that house, but we know that she had passed away. And so we were just kind of like, okay, well, this must be Patricia. So then whenever something was happening in that house, we would just call out Patricia's name and we would just talk to her like she was a person. And we'd be like, okay, Patricia, or, you know, like something kind of like that. Um... And then we also saw orbs, like, we would be standing somewhere and we'd be like, oh my god, there's like a dark figure over there, or oh, there's, you know, like a little orb, and, you know, so that in itself we would see. Um, but it was nothing ever, like, really harmful and, and stuff, but, I mean, that's... That's pretty much all that she remembers, and that's pretty much the, all that I remember. Neither of us live in that house anymore, so it's been a while. So none of us have seen Patricia in a while, but it's we had very fun memories at that house and in all of the other houses and places that we've lived together. So, you know, we treasure our, our, our memories together that we have. So, yeah. So that is my little ghost story for today. It's about Patricia. Um, we think that she was an old lady. Like, she, she was an old lady. And she was lonely. So I think she just wanted... Um, also, I just remembered something. We think that maybe... Um, we think that maybe... the room with the cats might have been her room 
and she we think that she loved the cats so much that she wanted to let them into her room and so whenever she could she would let the cats in there um and actually if i also remember correctly the thing that my best friend's boyfriend saw, I think he at one point thought that there was, it was a little kid because there was something that he had gone through that made him think that it was a little kid. So thinking about the story now and how my best friend felt um, like someone was sitting next to her, but then when she looked, nobody was there. I'm thinking, what if there was a little kid and that was the little kid's room and so Patricia, being the mom, probably would go in there and sit and, you know, sit with the child and just, you know, comfort them and, you know, put them to bed or, like, read them a story or something. And then, obviously, if I'm in distress and I'm crying or whatever, she seems like a sweet old lady and, like, a sweet ghost. <coughs> so, obviously... Why wouldn't she comfort me? Also, right after my voice crack, I look up. Happy Halloween, guys. Wow. Blah. Okay. So, I'm going to ask the question again. And I'm going to ask it in every video. Because I'm like... I want to know your stories like I I want to tell you my stories and I want to record them and keep them you know forever as my own memories to look back on but I'm interested in knowing like have you ever lived in a house where the people who previously lived there before you passed away and if so were you haunted by their ghosts um leave your stories and your comments in the comments below so that I can read them and yeah stay tuned for tomorrow's story it's I'm bringing you back to my childhood so you have that to look forward to and I will see you guys in the next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe Bye, guys.